everyone, Edna Kimball, Edna Sells, Century 21 Wright Real Estate, and welcome to today's episode where we have the Alexi <laughs> Keys. <laughs> and I was confused on what colors to wear. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Still just <laughs> Okay, it's, it's going to be exciting. So for those of you who don't know who Lexi Keys is, I don't know that there's anyone out there. Uh, let me explain to you who we've got here. Uh, Lexi is gradu a graduate of OSU, and she did that in three years. So impressive. Um, senior chair for the highest GPA. Now, it's something to do it in three years, but then to double down and have the highest GPA. I love that. Um, three years in a row named the Big 12 All-Academic First Team, three-year basketball starter, just signed with the OU Women's Basketball, the Big 12 players to post 45 and 110 rebounds and 60 assists last season. Love that. And then also Lexi was named to the Big 12 All-Freshman Team in 2021, two-time freshman of the week selection, and reached double figures six times during that season, including the NCAA tournament versus Stanford, which was quite the game. So, um, but obviously we have Lexi here because we just love her. We're so impressed with all of you. Thank you so much. Um, how? How is this happening? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think it's just growing up from a basketball family. Like, you know my family really well. Um, so, then, so for those who don't, Dad mm -hmm. is is the basketball coach <laughs> of the world, no, mm -hmm. of Woodall, mm -hmm. and he coached my two children, yes. and now he's coaching my grandchildren. Yes. How old yes. am I? <laughs> How old is he? Uh, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> okay, and then Mom is is not a coach, but no. she is um, a teacher. Uh, she used to be a teacher at Woodall, and then now she works at the VA in Muskogee. Okay, um, okay. So so lots of um, lots of people making sure you stay on that path. Oh, yes, right? definitely. And your brother is a coach. He is at one Woodall. of them. One of the brothers. Mm -hmm. So okay. And then little brother just graduated from Woodall. Oh so, my gosh. Big Woodall family. Yes. So you have a lot of people giving you advice. I do. <laughs> I have a lot of coaches in my life. <laughs> Everyone, you're surrounded by coaches. Yes. yes. Okay, so when uh, when did you fall in love with this game, basketball? Yeah, so I, I actually grew up playing softball. And that's my first love was softball. Um, I, of course, played basketball my whole life. Um, but then uh, I think it was going into my freshman year of um, high school, I joined an AAU team. And just I was still playing softball most weekends and then uh, just picking up with basketball every now and then. And um, during that time, just the atmosphere and like the competitiveness of everything and um, just seeing all the coaches there at the showcases and all that, I was like, man, like I want to do this. And so I think that was the first time um, that summer. It was just a few tournaments too. It wasn't like I was just super committed to it. Um, but that was when I fell in love with, with it. And then after that, um, just stuck with it. I love it. And yeah. it turned out pretty good. It did. It did turn out well, I think. It turned out very well. Okay. And so, uh, obviously, you started at Woodall. Mm -hmm. And where did you play in high school, for those who don't I know? I went to Sequoia for four years. Right. And so, though you guys, they take it very seriously there. They do. I Sequoia. was very fortunate. Um, I We had won a state tournament in softball my, I think, my junior year, um, which was the first one in school history. So, that was really fun. So, I, I still got to play softball in high school. Um, very fortunate to have a really good team. And then one, I think it was my freshman year and sophomore year in basketball. So um, went to back to back in basketball. So um, that was very fortunate too. Oh, but. wow. That, that's a good, <laughs> a good start. So, um, and so tell us about the transition from high school to OSU. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was, it was a big adjustment because I actually, I had signed to go play at UT Arlington and um, coaches, coaching changes happen. And um, honestly, it was like the craziest, craziest experience for me because um, I truly, me and my family talk about it all the time. It was truly like God paved a way for me to come back. Um, being and like, keeping you close yes, by so everybody could make it to those Yeah, games. just having my, my family, like my support yeah. system so close. Um, it's really important for me to like, at my games at OSU, like so many people from Tahlequah get to come see me and um, that makes a difference, you know, it makes you want to play harder, makes you want to work harder. Um, but there, that's really big for me. And so, um, I truly believe God made a way for me to go to OSU. Aww. Um, the, and then the transition, it was an adjustment, just bigger school coming from Tahlequah, <laughs> you know, uh, just living in Tahlequah my whole life and still in a small community. Um, but so that was really nice. It felt like home. Um, definitely very fortunate and thankful for my three years there. Oh, that's amazing. And so now 
Big news. Big you news. Signed the OU. Signed to OU. Okay, and and I may have known before. Mm-hmm. What, when when was it public knowledge? Um, I don't remember when it exactly it was. Is um. I don't even know. It wasn't super long ago. Okay, uh, yeah, like, very recently. Yeah, it was my a... my granddaughter is a super fan, so <laughs> she stalks you, and I know more than I probably should know. So <laughs> you know all the details. Yes, yes, she's at she's at Whittall, so you yes. know with with your father and your brother mm-hmm. as her coaches, so she gets all the inside she gets scoops. All of it. <laughs> and she's gonna be so mad that she missed today. So, so tell us about when does the OU program start? Yeah, so I report up there June 10th. Um, I'll be up there June and July working out. Um, pretty full schedule, um, which is typical. Um, and then we'll start our season and official practices. And we pretty much practice from um, when I get up there in June all the way until, I guess, late March when hopefully Phoenix Strauss can make a run in the tournament. But um, it's a, it's a full, full oh, job for sure, gosh. but I'm excited. That is so, well, we are so excited because we're going to be changing colors in our <laughs> house, you know, from that orange and black over. So, um, so tell us, uh, obviously you didn't get here just because other people are telling you what to mm-hmm. do. What's, what's your driving force? Like what makes you get up in the mornings? Honestly, I think it's, like I said, my family is very, very important to me. Um, and I think as I've gotten older, like everyone has that, like, why do I play kind of thing. Right. Um, and I think the last two years was like, kind of showed me like, um, my why in my sport, obviously like you grow up, you love that you play because you love a sport, you know, right. but once you're in college, I like, guess the job, like you don't get up every day and like, man, like I do not, I, you don't, sometimes you don't want to do it, you know, sure. you're like, I have to do this. And I think a big, uh, thing was I'm very goal oriented and, um, You've had I've had to learn to like set goals for myself and go and achieve them. Um, so I think just um, finding out that I could graduate early and then knowing what I want to do later on um, in my career um, that was a big driving factor. And then also my faith is super super important to me. And so um, being given the ability to play at this level, the highest stage, um, given this platform, it's not something that I um, take for granted. And so being able to share my faith and go speak to FCA groups and all that, that, uh, knowing little kids are watching you and then seeing them up to you after the games, um, that is really, really special to me. Um, And it's not something I take lightly. And so I think that's really my biggest thing is just showing people, like, if I can do this, they can do this kind of thing. I love that. I love that because so often it's, you know, the the – little girl from mm-hmm. Whittle, you know, yes. and so all those other little girls yes. from Whittle, it's like, oh, it is possible. Yes. I love that. So what does a typical day look like for you during season? During season, it's a full schedule. Um, I think we're allotted like 20-ish hours a week, and so it can be broke up however um, they want it to. Um, typically, um, we get up in the morning, I have classes early in the morning and workouts early in the morning, so kind of just Typically, I would have to either be a little late to workouts or um, have to leave a little bit early because I had class in the morning and then wait so I had to kind of balance that. Um, so what time do you get up? It just depends on the day, honestly. Um, there was, We'd workouts during the season where it was like 7 or 8 a.m., maybe 9. Um, so you had to be up earlier than that just to, you know, get over there. But um, just going through that and then going to class in the afternoon and then typically we would have um, practices late afternoon um, they're about two and a half three hours a day and so that was a whole thing and then um, my degree wasn't exactly the easiest thing in the world so, so what is your degree because I did not find that yeah, when I so was checking you out here I got my undergrad in psychology pre-occupational therapy Oh, so wow. super excited no, about that. you didn't pick it easy one. <laughs> I didn't do the easy thing, I guess. Okay. No, I... That's, that's even more impressive to know that you had the, the GPA and finished in three years. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to be an occupational therapist later on. Um, so getting all my sciences, my labs, uh, my classes are typically long, just having labs. And so then going to the two and a half, three hour practice... Um, then I have to get shots up afterwards and do all that. And then when I finish, go eat, go to bed, do homework, all that kind of stuff. But it's definitely a full day. You don't get a lot of free time. (laughs) You don't get a lot of free time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so tell us about the FCA program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I loved um, my time at at OSU having FCA there. Um, It was a, found some of my closest friends there, honestly. 
Um, my, and for those who don't know what that is, Fellowship of Christian Athletes okay. and Students. Um, so we would meet every Monday night. Um, I think it was like eight o'clock at night, so a little bit late, but just when everyone, all the athletes, you know, stuff going super on. late. Yeah. Um, but we would come and we would have fellowship, just have food, there's games. We would have like a speaker, a guest speaker. Um, sometimes it was our own like peers, just getting oh. to hear their testimonies and um, how they grew up and just how we all came to the same place. Like we started different places, but we're here together. Um, it, I was in it in high school at FCA, or I was in FCA at high school, um, so I kind of just grew up knowing what FCA was. Um, but it's been a really huge part of my life, and um, it's kind of, honestly, it's helped me stay the course, um, stay focused, and um, like I said, my faith has always been important to me. And so having, being an athlete, like, you sometimes forget, like, the extra stuff that's important to you sometimes because basketball, like, it's always on your mind or your sport. And so having that time set aside um, where I could come with all my friends, we're all like-minded, um, a lot of us are all athletes, uh, carrying the same stuff, learning from each other, hearing each other speak, um, grow, and really push each other, that was um, really nice to have. Um, the FCA rep there, his name's John Talley, um, super good guy, he's doing amazing things there, um, but I was very, very fortunate for OSU FCA. Oh, that's amazing. And and I would really encourage everyone if you're, you know, a young athlete mm -hmm. to find that group. Because yes, absolutely. You are exposed to a lot of other options. Yes, you are. <laughs> the minute you leave home. Yes. Right? Yes. And you know you when you're playing a sport, you are always around your teammates and you don't get to choose your teammates. Um you have to love them, support them. You don't have to hang out with them outside necessarily all the time and do the same things. Um, and that's kind of, I feel like it's hard for athletes to kind of pick the path um, right. and know the balance, honestly, because um, you need that good bond, team chemistry, and you need to know your teammates, but um, sometimes you don't make the same choices, and that's okay, and I and I think um, something that I had to learn was it's okay to not make the same choice. Yeah. Um, really just learning to stand alone, be your own person, and um, be a leader in that aspect, and then FCA just gave me the... Um, the the chance and the opportunity to meet people that um, had the same goals as me and um, thought like I did and just were like minded and that was really really special because it's time you just can relax you know you yes. don't have to think about too much I love that mm -hmm. I love that and have you connected with your OU group yet I have not so I, um, it is a little early I haven't been up there too much when I want to visit and all of that but um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I I know there's just like a really really big FCA group where OSU was it was growing, but it's a little bit of a smaller community and all that. Um, but I've heard a lot of really good things. They have a lot of events up there at Norman, and so I'm super excited to get involved. Oh my gosh! Well, we are excited. so excited for you. Thank I you. I think that um, you know no one the young people don't want to hear this, but just how humble you are. And the fact that you're willing to give back, you know, I just think that's huge. And, that's and that's what that's why we're super fans of it. So <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, of course, uh, my granddaughter being one of your, your super fans, I <laughs> hope that she follows in that course. And, and she does look up to you. And I love that you are humble enough to see that, that younger children are watching, younger athletes are watching, other athletes are mm -hmm. watching, even if they're not younger. Yes. And so that's so important that, that you acknowledge that and are aware of that. Thank so you I very love much. that. So, um, so with OU, do you anticipate having more free time or less free time? I think it, no matter where you go, especially during season, you don't have as much free reign. Um, and that's just something you have to sacrifice for your sport. Um, and sports in general, every sport, you know, yes. you have to sacrifice a lot. Um, but that's your commitment. That's your, you know, your passion. And so that's okay. Sports aren't forever though. So, oh, there you go. That's the, there that's you the go. Good part. Okay. But we're looking for March Madness maybe? Oh, definitely. Okay. <laughs> definitely looking to make a run of I March love Madness. that. I love that. So now this is a real estate, you know, podcast. So we always have to kind of bring it back to real estate. And I always like to ask every guest if money was no object and you could buy your dream home right now, What's three things you would want that dream home to have? Oh, man. You that's, might be too young to even be thinking that's about the dream hard home, one. <laughs> Oh, man. I definitely want a lot of land. That's my okay. biggest thing. I am a, I come from a country family. That's so, true. You guys have cattle yes, we and livestock. So that's the yeah. main thing. I want to be out in the country. Um, and I love wraparound porches. Love them. You are a country I, girl. I okay. love wraparound porches. I think 
just for my mom, she loved wrapped around porches, and so I grew up just knowing what yes. wrapped around porches. Yes. Um, definitely want that. Hmm. To have to have a basketball goal or a <laughs> and probably a pool. Oh, a pool. Probably okay. a pool. Okay, that Big makes sense. Big pool girl. That makes sense. But so. I don't know about the interior stuff. I haven't really got that far okay. into it. Okay, well, that's, that's, none of that is crazy, right? <laughs> so all of that is doable. I love that. Well, very good. Well, we are super excited that you were able to join us because we really do realize how busy you are and how much you've got going on. But we're super excited to follow you. And we're shifting our colors over <laughs> to, to OU's colors. Um, and really just keep on doing what you're doing because it's, you. it's fantastic and we're so excited to have you on today's podcast. Thank you so, so much for having me. Okay guys, as usual, please like and follow and share and if you want more specific stats, you can check out below. We'll put uh, Miss Lexi's Instagram uh, on there so you can kind of see what's happening and if you would like to be a guest on the podcast or there's someone that you would like to see on please reach out and let us know and thank you for watching today's how to real estate thanks everyone